So, Mind Valley, you're in for a special treat today. Our trainer for this masterclass is one of the most incredible personalities I've ever seen on camera or on stage. I've been working with her, being mentored by her, being coached by her for seven years. She's helped me become a better speaker, become a better orator. She's helped me, in a way, become the teacher I am today because she is someone I place at the pinnacle of her craft. Now, you all know Lisa Nichols, but what you may not know is what exactly Lisa Nichols has been able to accomplish in her lifetime. Despite her, her circumstances, Lisa was once a single mom. If you've heard a story, you know about how a mere 20 years ago, she barely could afford to buy diapers for her newborn baby, Jelani. She had $11 to her name. Yet today, today, every May 9th, the city of Houston celebrates Lisa Nichols Day. Lisa Nichols is one of only two African-American women founders of public listed companies in America. Today, Lisa Nichols is the author of seven best-selling books. Today, Lisa Nichols companies have touched the lives of 211,000 teenagers and helped prevent close to 4,000 teen suicides. So I know this woman is gonna to touch your lives in this next one hour together, like she's touched the lives of countless millions of people. Yet in the last year alone, Lisa Nichols has touched the lives of, get this, 20 million people through all her media exposure globally. That is how impactful and powerful this woman is. But when you go back to where she came from, it is incredible to see how a broke single mom with $11 to her name could come this far in a mere 19 years. So let's give a big, big, big frickin' round of applause to the one and only Lisa Nichols. Come on, man. Uh, welcome, Lisa. Hey, welcome, come on. Join me. She join also me. knows how to join dance. Me. Join me, come on, come on. Hey, you guys. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so, so much, welcome. So, um, hi, everybody, hi, everyone. She, by the way, Lisa also does a badass Bruno Mars impersonation. <laughs> Bruno, whenever you need a stand-in, I'm just saying, I'm ready. Do you want me to talk to that camera with you or just... You can talk to any camera okay, you want, great, Lisa. Great. <laughs> Pick a I'm camera. Just, I'm just saying, you know, in addition to speaking, I kind of do a great... Just lip sync. I can't hold a note if you strapped it to my back. But I can dance and do a great lip sync. So before we start, can I just share a really, really, really funny story about Yes, you? please. Okay, so way back in 2010, I wanted to start this thing called A-Fest, right? Except that most people had no idea who I was. I didn't know any big speakers. And I happened to be, uh, a, um, I happened to have a small spot at a conference in, I think it was Calgary, yes. Canada. It yes, was, it was uh, Canada. It was, it was 2010. And Lisa was one of the keynotes. So at the end of your keynote, I remember Lisa had this big VIP reception and hundreds of people were coming to meet Lisa. And I managed to go up to Lisa because I was a speaker, a smaller time speaker, but I asked her if she would join me for lunch. And so me and Lisa went up for lunch and I said, Lisa. And I gotta say, he had this genuineness about him and he had a passion and he just stood out. You just stood out amongst everyone. Thank you, You're welcome. thank you. So I, I, I told Lisa, Lisa, what is it gonna take to get you to come and speak at my event? And she said, Vision, you know, I am, I'm booked. I'm basically speaking almost every weekend every week. for the next one year. I'm traveling all across the world and I need time for myself as well. So I, I just don't know. I only have, do you know, and, and then she said something along the lines of, I only have one weekend free one this year. Free so I, I turned to her and I'm like, well, well what, what weekend is that? And she goes, you serious? And I go, yeah, what, what weekend is that? And she goes, she opens a calendar and she goes, it's December 11th. That's the only weekend I have free. And I had no date for A-Fest at that time. I didn't even know I was going to be able to pull it off. So I go, well, you know, Lisa, what a coincidence. That's the date we picked for A-Fest. And I didn't even see it coming. I didn't, like, when I look back on it, I go, that was masterful. And he goes, that's, that's the one weekend that, that's the weekend. Can you do it? And I was like, Okay. And so December 11 became the first yeah. ever A-Fest. December 11, 2010 in Costa Rica, Lisa Nichols came. And, and then I went to other speakers and I'm like, guys, I'm doing this event in Costa Rica. 
Lisa Nichols had only one weekend free and she chose to speak at Costa Rica at A-Fest. And then I got Chip Conley, yes. uh, the hotelier. I got yes. Sri Kumar Rao, you the had a great professor. Lineup. I got all of these other speakers to come and A-Fest was born. Thank you for having December 11 free. You're welcome. It was, you know, when I look back on it, it was one of the best decisions. You know, I believe that there are no accidents, there are divine appointments when something like that happens. Synergies come together and magical things happen. It's been years and years later. I've watched you have two children. You've watched my son grow up. Uh, you watched my career explode to the next level. I watched AFES become one of the most in demand the most in-demand talked about events uh, globally. So uh, it was a good good December 11th. And, and, and you know what, what What happened from that? Lisa has since spoken at every single A-Fest. She has not missed one. That's 12 A-Fests in something like nine different countries yes. over the last seven years. Yes. She's not missed one. And because she's such a masterful speaker, in half of those, I invited her to close the event yes. with her brilliance. Yes. And today, you're gonna to get a glimpse of that brilliance. You're going to learn the secret sauce that makes Lisa such an insanely powerful woman, that gives her the fuel to touch the world in such remarkable ways, from saving teenage lives, mm. to setting up a public company, to writing best-selling books. But guys, all of it, if, if, if you have to pinpoint Lisa's core skill, it's the ability to move people with a story, to make an audience fall madly in love with her. And this is what we're gonna be going deep into in this masterclass. You're gonna go behind the black curtain. You're gonna learn what Lisa does, and you're gonna gain some skills that you can instantly apply in your life. Yes. You know, what I love about what we're about to do together is that um, while it's my gift, it can be anyone's skill set. And as a gift, I had to even hone the skill and become conscious. You've done so many things unconsciously on stage that the moment I brought it from your unconscious to your conscious, you just became more intentional about it. So what I love about this is that some of these techniques as a communicator, you may already be doing, some may be totally new to you, but when you bring it from your unconscious to your conscious, now you get to use your powers, use your superpowers with intention. So I'm excited about this. And what's masterful about Lisa is that she's consciously competent. Look, I'm sure if you go back and you ask Martin Luther King or John F. Kennedy, yes. what made you such a great orator? They, are probably, they, they, they probably can't articulate it in yes. terms of a framework. Yes. They are amazing speakers. That's called unconscious competence. Now, what's unique about Lisa is she's consciously competent. She's a great speaker, but she can break it down into a 30-step framework yes. and she can teach that framework and she can create other great speakers. How many world-class speakers have you trained thus oh. far? Wow. Um, we're probably well over well over 420 at the world-class level. Right. We have up leveled we've up leveled uh, <laughs> We've uploaded several thousand speakers that would rate themselves at a two or three when they came into our right. on our campus, and by the time we finished training them, whether whether it was virtually or live, they then rate themselves at an eight or nine, or more importantly, their audiences were rating them at a two. And, and now, they're getting speaking gigs, and oh, they're getting books published, yeah, and they're changing, building six figure careers, right? And having they're transforming their companies. Yes, and, yes, and, 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 and their families. Right, and and what's unique about Lisa is she's one of the highest paid trainers in the world for creating speakers, doctors, lawyers, uh, entrepreneurs, go to her. Stop it, they, wait, 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 stop wait, wait, wait. it. I gotta share this. God. They join her global leadership program. Um, I think, I think the, the, the fee for that is $47,000 a year. It's a, it's a PhD level entrepreneurship course right. for people who want to elevate their brand on every modality. And right. we know that the core of that is owning and harnessing and using your message. And so we have a, we're in our seventh cycle of global leaders. So we've, we've, we've run a number of people through the program. We have graduates, multiple gra graduates have been with us for six, seven years. And it's an investment. It's almost $50,000 and, and we know the ROI. We know what we deliver. We're very comfortable. Right. And some of these people have gone on and they've tripled or quadrupled oh my the God. amount of dollar business. We have a couple of people with Because 10X. of the power of their voice. We have a few people who have 10x, literally 10x their income right. in the last five. And it's taken five years, but I'll, five, I'll take five years of 10x my income. Then everyone else on average, they're between 3x and 5x over the course of two years. And that's what makes this woman unique. And in this masterclass, 
you are going to learn over the next 40, 45 minutes or so some really powerful insights that you will directly be able to apply in your life. Now. Now, whether you're trying to close your next investment round or ask your boss for a raise or have an idea you have heard within your company or have a conversation in a bar with someone you want to meet, our ability to communicate influences every aspect of our life. And when you learn to bring conscious competence to that, you change as a human being. Absolutely. Um, you learn, you know, communication, consider communication to be a flat experience. It's just words. When you learn the techniques that we're going to show you, all of a sudden you add texture to it. And that's the excitement is that you can say the exact same thing as the next guy, but it's the texture you put on it that increases your USP, your unique serving proposition. So many of you, either before discovering this masterclass or uh, in the past couple of months, may have seen this three-minute clip <laughs> about Lisa. So the story is Lisa was invited to the Steve Harvey show. And there's a particular point in that show, and I think in Steve Harvey, you spoke for about 20 minutes, right? I did. I gave but a lot of content for 20 minutes. A three-and-a-half-minute yes. slice yes. that went viral on Facebook. Yes. 23 million people yes. watched it on Facebook. There was one line. This guy posted it out of... Africa. Some, some, yeah. it was, it was, he lived in New York and he posted one line. He said, someone needs to hear this today. Right. And it went everywhere. Three and a half minutes. Of right. It. I'm, I'm going to play a minute or two of this so you guys can observe Lisa. Right. Now, keep in mind, this was 2014. Um, There's been a transformation since then. Lisa is getting younger every year. Well, so you may not recognize her based on who she is today uh, from this me. clip in 2014. That's me. But Observe how she's articulating her story. And remember, this got reshared 23 million times on Facebook. Let's roll that clip. I was at rock bottom. I was broke and I was broken. I got fired from five different jobs. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with my son unexpectedly. And then at eight months, my son's father went to prison. And when my son was eight months old, I went to the ATM to get $20 out the bank because I didn't have any pampers for him. And in order to get $20 out, you got that $20 in. I had $11.42. And I still can't tell the story without getting emotional because of my story. For two days, I had to wrap my son in, in a towel. But something happened, Steve, in those two days. My son laying on his back at eight months. I have a towel over him, and I have my hand on his stomach saying, don't you worry, Jelani. Mommy will never be this broke again. And I made a decision, I was bankrupt. And every stinking thinking I had, I was bankrupt and trying to protect my pride. I was bankrupt and trying to be all that in a bag of chips and a bowl of grits falsified. I was bankrupt and trying to not ask anyone for help. I was bankrupt in everything that was holding me and keeping me where I was. I've always talked a good game, but I wasn't doing anything with my gift. And all that thing about potential, I was tired of having potential. I wanted to have my now. And I looked at that baby at eight months, and I said, I want to transform your life. Because you didn't ask to come into this chaos. As an African-American male child in South Central Los Angeles, with a single mother whose father's in prison, he had a 66% chance of going to prison himself. Not on my watch. Mm. Not on my watch. So if I have to be willing to drastically transform myself so that I can become the woman, that I know I can be. Right. And that's what I began to do. I was radical. Lisa, that was amazing. Now, now tell us a little bit about what was going on right, there. Right. What's fascinating is that I, w I gave 20 minutes of content, but people attach not so much to your education or the intellectual exchange. They attach, they respect that, and they appreciate that, and they take notes. What they connect to like glue is your story. Because when you give hope, there's this thing about hope. When you give hope, and it's not hope to the hopeless, it's hope to people, possibility to people. All of a sudden, this connection. I got so hundreds and thousands of emails. People would find me in the grocery store or the cleaners or at the beach, and they'd say, oh my God, 
You're the lady with the pampers. You're the $11.42 lady. I mean, they would literally, they would get excited. They would, and many people got excited and they didn't have that story at all. What it did for them is it tapped them into their resiliency. It, it tapped them into their determination. It tapped them into their why, the why that they get up for, the why that they have forgotten. That story superseded everything else that I could have shared on Steve Harvey. After that, I began to work with Steve Harvey. I've been, I began to work with his team. I began to work with other, you know, high level teams because people may not even know exactly all that you know. They, they see your track record, but in a, in your story, they know who you are. They know what you stand for. And what happened there, Vision, was America met what I stood for. And when they met what I stood for through, by the way, through what used to be the most embarrassing story of my life, I never thought ever I'm going to share when I was broken, broken. I'm going to share when I couldn't put pampers as a parent, you're a parent as a parent. All you want to do is give your children safety. You want to give them shelter. You want to give them food and you want to give them inspiration to be good human beings. I couldn't feed my son nor put pampers on him. So I didn't want to necessarily share this story, but I knew that if I was gonna inspire people to get back up again, I first had to share with them when I was knocked down. And that's the only reason why I shared it. I didn't share the story to go viral. I had no idea it would go viral. As a matter of fact, when I went back to the green room, I was sitting in the green room like, oh man, there you go again, sharing those stories, sharing a deep story, knowing how, how powerful it could be. But I, I you, you, knowing how powerful it could be, it doesn't change the fact that you get a little nervous. It doesn't change the fact that you're giving up something. And that day I gave up something and, and I went back to the green room, braced myself for a moment, calmed myself down because I realized I'd, I'd, I'd served up something to America. And then all of a sudden the wave came in. I call it the tsunami wave. And it was the wave of, we love you. We appreciate you. We choose you. Oh my God. And, but it was the same thing that happened in the secret. Like, there, so you talk about, you know, you talk about having this conscious competence and, and I have the pleasure of studying Dr. Martin Luther King and studying um, Kennedy and studying Nelson Mandela. So I looked at the pattern of what were they doing? They were always taking you into their lives through a story, inspiring you, then sharing with you, inspiring you, then giving you a story, inspiring. They, they, they follow this formula. If you study great orators, they have a formula. I don't think they were conscious about their formula, but they have a formula. I, I studied ministers and ministers would go so far and then they take you into a story and, and you just see the backs of everyone listening straighten up. So when I was in the secret, I was sharing and then I went into a story. And then the secret was the secret tsunami as well, that I, I was one of the most requested speakers in the secret. And I, I kept going, how? The people in the secret are, are the most brilliant people on the planet. And while they got a lot of accolades, my life transformed. But people kept saying, I can connect to your story. I connected to your story. And so the same thing in The Secret, the same thing on Oprah, the same thing on Steve Harvey. Like, I think the smartest, things we, the smartest thing we can do is recognize patterns and then become conscious about the pattern. So let's, let's unwrap that. Yes. And let's share with you guys the patterns that you can emulate right now. So I'm super, super excited to share this with you because this is taking you behind the black curtain. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna fire off. I was gonna sound like I'm talking fast because I am. I'm gonna fire off as much as I can to you in around 40, 45 minutes. And there's much more, but this at least will get you started. Matter of fact, it will th just apply what I'm gonna share you here alone will elevate you above probably anyone else that's speaking on a stage next to you or at a classroom or at a board meeting, wherever you might be. It'll elevate you. And I'm not saying that from a place of competition. I'm saying that from a place of USP, unique serving proposition, being very visual for the world to see. Stories. Stories are powerful. Stories allow your listener, your audience, audience of one or audience of 1,000, it allows them to see you. Think of it like this. When you're taking someone on, a, on an intellectual journey and you want to get them from A to Z, tr look at it as if you're building a building. And all the, all the bricks in the building, all the bricks are 
That's the content. That's the education. That's what the people need to know to get them to the goal, right? Well, think of the story as a cement in between the bricks that sticks the bricks together. Cement, that's your story. Your stories stick everything else together. It makes everything else matter. The story is what allows the listener to have context, to have flavor, to have texture to your content. So do you need the story to make the content valid? Not at all, but you need the story to become one of the most memorable speakers out there, or you need the story to become unforgettable. You need the story to allow your audience to fall madly in love with you. Now, to tell a great story, you need to have several things occurring. One, you need to, you need to take your audience to a time and a place. Be specific in a time and a place. 1994 and 1997 and 2010. Take them to a time and place and then paint the picture of where they are, what's happening. Think of it as a movie. When you go to watch a movie, the first 10 seconds of a movie, they show you the time of year. Is it spring? Is it summer? Is it winter? They show you where in the world are you? Are you in Slovenia? Are you in Norway? Are you in New York? Are you in Los Angeles? Are you in Hollywood? They let you know where you are the first 10 seconds. So when you're telling a story, bring me into the story and let me know where you are. Why? Because when you give me a picture into your life, I give you a part of me. So your story requires you to get out of your intellect and into an experience. And when you want a story to really land and have impact, let me fall in love with the characters in the story. So give me a little bit about them. When I talk about my grandmother, if you've ever seen me on YouTube and you hear me talk about my grandma, I always change my voice. Grandma says, baby, if you want to have power in life, you got to be willing to go deep. I changed my tone and I introduced you to the character. I let you know their style. I let you know who they are. Now, you might be one of those people to say, well, I don't want to do all that. That feels like it's dramatic. Guess what? When you have an audience, an audience of one or an audience of a thousand, guess what? You are the performer. You're the performer via content. You're the performer via visual arts. You are. While you may not go melodramatic all Hollywood, you do want to bring context and texture. Some of the best engagers are the best engagers because they're profound storytellers. You can listen to them tell stories all day long. You know, you know, Lisa, that, that, that's so intriguing because I've seen you speak maybe 10 or 15 times. And I remember that character of your grandma. Yes. And I'm, I'm realizing now as you're mentioning what you did, that I can recall in detail key stories yes. from speeches even five years ago with this character of your grandmother, who is a real person whom I've actually met, incredible woman, but it just clicked. It is really, really, really powerful. And I, I'm beginning to see what you're doing. <clears throat> so it's like this secret technique that now Vision is figuring out that I did to him years ago. And that is, I can earn your respect via content. You can earn your listeners' respect, your audience's respect via content. But they fall in love with you and they remember you from your stories. Most speakers won't ever think to give the gift of stories. And when I say the gift of stories, it's not just the gift to their audience. It's also the gift of themselves because that's what makes you memorable. As a matter of fact, a great story told well enough it doesn't make you memorable. It makes you freaking unforgettable. And you want to be unforgettable, especially in this crowded world of online, social media, brand building, entrepreneur. You want to be the one that people remember. And just like you remember my grandmother, people will remember you through your stories. They'll follow you because of your stories. They'll respect you because of your intellect. How about you have both? How about you get people to follow you, love you, respect you, and have loyalty from you, and tell a friend or two about you. That will only occur when you tell, share with them not only what you know, but also your stories, because your stories share with them who you really are. It gives context and texture. See, when I was six years old, I always wanted to be an entertainer. I would stand in front of my grandmother and I would give my best entertainment. When I turned 24, I began to write I begin to write speeches and I would take a speech and I would write it about two, three minute speech. And I'd stand in front of my grandmother and I'd share my speech with my grandmother and I'd move with my speech. And as I would share my speech, my grandmother would go, 
Hmm. And whenever she went, hmm, I knew she really liked that part. So I pull out my little yellow highlighter and I'd highlight that part and I'd finish the speech and I'd stand there and my grandmother would clap and I'd give my grandmother the speech. She'd put it in this little black folder titled Lisa's Speeches. And I said, Grandma, one day I'm going to be a motivational speaker. And my grandmother, I would go back to my grandmother's house about a month later and I'd read another speech to her and she'd go, Hmm, whenever she heard something she liked. And I'd highlight that part. And then I'd give her to her. She'd put it in the folder. Every month, I'd go to my grandmother's house. I'd deliver the speech. She'd go, hmm, I'd highlight. She'd put it in the folder. Month after month, I'd speak. She'd, hmm, I'd highlight. we put it in the folder. Then after like nine months of doing this, she said, baby, now what is it that you said you wanted to be? Because she had never heard of a motivational speaker before. I said, a motivational speaker, grandma. She said, now, what do they do again? I said, they motivate people. She goes, how many people? I said, millions, Grandma. She said, well, who else have you shared these speeches with? I said, just me and you, Grandma. She said, well, baby, if you want to be a motivational speaker and you want to sh- you want to motivate millions, you might want to share your speeches with somebody other than Grandma. And that was when I realized I needed to let my dream out. I needed to go trust people other than my Grandma with my speech. So that was a story that I just gave you, a nugget. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> and again, you brought in grandma. Yes. Did you notice? Did you notice how her voice changed? Yes. Did you? I also noticed you were doing something with your hands. Yes. When you spoke about her putting the speech in yes. a black folder. Now, why was that? Why? Why did you mention that the folder was black? Why did you do that thing with your hand? Why did you change your voice? Oh my God, I love this. I love the fact that you would ask that because a story isn't told. A story is a show me story. Don't tell me the story, show me the story. Show me the folder, show me you reading, show me you highlighting, hmm. After a while, you don't even say grandma went, hmm. You just can go, hmm. Like when you begin to show, all of a sudden I'm looking at an oral movie. Now when you can do that, that's game changer. All of a sudden, you captivate your audience. No one's checking Facebook. No one's texting. No one's looking down. They're all riveted by your story because they don't want to miss one visual moment of your oral story. Absolutely powerful. Absolutely game changer. It's get, it takes you to the next level and puts you at a place as a speaker, as an orator, where very few people live. And it's just a skill set. It's not, most people look at me, and while I'm a gifted speaker, I was born to speak, I was doing it at five. While I'm a gifted speaker, it's a skill set that you can hone and learn and master like any other skill set, literally. And so what I did in that moment was I, I went from telling you to showing you. Now, when you first begin, you have to set the parameters. Remember, like I told, like I mentioned before, what season are we in? What's the climate? What's the, what city are we in? So that's what I did initially. And then I begin to tell you less and show you more. When you do that, all of a sudden, I know grandma. Your listeners know grandma. When you tell a story, people begin to know your characters. When you share your story, all of a sudden the listener becomes a part of your journey. And then what happens is you tap into something in them. You tap into a void or you tap into a confirmation. You either feel something that they needed or you give them an affirmation or a confirmation that they've been waiting on. Either way, it's a gift. And what they give you back as a result of that gift is loyalty. You know, so often I find myself looking at my life today and I run a multi-million dollar business and I travel the world and I touch about 30 million people a year on all the platforms that I operate on. But I wasn't always that way. I didn't always get to, I wasn't always the woman I am today. I didn't always have the confidence I had. There was a time in 1994 when I felt broke and broken. And I used 1994 as a, as a staple because that was the year my son was born. And I remember when my son was born, I said, I do not want this child to have the life that I'm living right now. I don't want it. See, in 1994, I had to get on government's assistance to have my son. I needed help to feed him. I needed help to clothe him. I wasn't able to take care of him. I had been, I had been productive, but somewhere along the line, I hit a wall. 
I don't even know when I hit the wall. I don't know when I stopped driving and thriving and just start surviving. And because I was pretty smart, I can get by playing at 50%. I don't know if you know about that, but I can get by. And I played at 50% so long that 50% had become my 100%. And in 1995, my son was about eight months old and I ran out of Pampers. And I hit rock bottom because I couldn't even buy him Pampers. And I tell this story often because not for lack of other stories, but because I finally felt what rock bottom felt like. And I, I don't know if you've ever been here, but when I hit rock bottom and I could literally feel, I felt like I could feel the ground on my back. Two things happened. One, I said never here again. And two, I wasn't afraid of what can happen to me from that point. All I could do was get up. And people often ask me, I was interviewed 155 times in a five month period. And the number one question was, what did you do? Well, I would be remiss and I would be a lie if I didn't tell you that what I did to change my life was I got real clear what rock bottom felt like. I got real clear what misery felt like. I wasn't seeking it, I didn't look for it, and you don't have to get it. But when I was there, I didn't sugarcoat it, I didn't try to lie about it, I didn't try to dance around it, I didn't try to out-navigate it, I just said, this is the place I won't be anymore. I just did it to you again. I took you on a story. So when you're sharing content and you're teaching people how to do things, how to think a particular way, how to go a particular place, how to do a particular system, you actually, when you tell a story, it's like a very entertaining or what I like to call edutaining intermission. Wait, that, that was brilliant. <laughs> I, I actually was almost tearing up even though I know your story. I've heard that countless times about you wrapping your baby in a towel because you couldn't afford Pampers. What's amazing Pampers. is that I didn't tell you the towel this time. You didn't, you didn't mention the towel, but I you remember. Remembered. I remember. And what I noticed you did different was rock bottom. You, that was so beautiful. Don't make me tear up in the middle of my damn masterclass, Lisa. No, it's now gonna I gotta, happen. I gotta focus again. I'm gonna oh. do the juju on you every time. Tissue. <laughs> But, but that, that was powerful. You saw what happened over there. You, you, even like right now, my voice is different because you brought out emotions within me. I, that was amazing. Right, so when you're... When but, you, but, but guys, I wanna state one thing. That is real. That is actually Lisa's yeah. story. In no way are we saying, make stuff up. No. You right. don't have to make anything up. Trust me when I say, your real life has enough drama in it. You have enough drama to have the most colorful. I always tell people, you don't have to make up things. The truth is so sexy. I mean, it's sexy. The truth is full of color, it's full of love, it's full of drama, it's full of chaos, it's full of breakthroughs, it's full of breakdown, it's full of resiliency, it's full of unstoppable moments, it's full of non-negotiable moments. You just haven't identified them yet because you haven't had to. So they don't look today like a story. They look like an incident. It looks like a moment. It looks like a time when your faith was challenged. It looks like a time when you had to say something you thought you'd never say, do something you thought you would never do so that you can get something that you always wanted to get or you can be the man or the woman you always have known yourself to be. Or you had to fight for something. You had to fight for your life, fight for your dignity, fight for your perseverance, fight for your voice, fight for your freedom. Fight for your life. At 19, I, I had this montage of memories. I, I was in the shower and I just stepped out the shower and I started to dry my body and all of a sudden I began to remember something and I went through this series of thoughts that I did not invite into my mind. All of a sudden I remembered someone else in my space, someone else in my zone. I remembered the day that I was touched inappropriately. I was molested when I was five. I didn't invite that thought in. I didn't invite that picture in. Where did it come from? Why did it come now? 
It wasn't so much the memory that rocked my world. It was the way I felt after the memory. It was the dirty. It was the slime. It was the, it was the betrayal. It was the anger. I had never tapped into an anger like that. I could feel my boy. I can feel something boiling in my body. I can feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I can feel this venom running through my body. I can feel myself wanting to hunt this person down. And I didn't even know his name. All of a sudden, what followed that was a sense of sadness that intruded me. It came into my body. All of a sudden, it came into my heart. I felt what dark felt like. Dark in my heart? No. I have a beautiful mom. I have a beautiful dad. I have a beautiful brother. I got an amazing family. What the hell did this darkness come in from? This is not welcome. I went into the medicine cabinet. And I knew my father wouldn't be home for at least six hours. I pulled out the extra strength Tylenol. I poured it into my hand, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would eight do it? See, I don't wanna die but I don't want to live with this kind of pain. I wasn't sure if eight would do it. So I got on my knees instead and I cried out to God, God, please, please, if you take this pain away from me, if you bring me back into the light, I'll spend a lifetime helping other people find their light. I promise. I promise. And that was the beginning of this journey called a transformational speaker. True story. Just not told very often until today. Okay, now I need a tissue. Me too. I I never knew that about you. I never knew that Tylenol story. That I don't share it. So storytelling, you have to be willing to allow people to go into a place that you're, that you don't normally let people go into because when you do, there's a sense of loyalty that they then have for you. That. Triff, could we get tissues, please? Thank you, Matt. Matt's been waiting. (laughs) Yes. Could I get one too? (laughs) So guys, you see how powerful the storytelling can be. And maybe you felt it too. I know even being the host of this masterclass, I could feel that if those emotions running through me um, when Lisa told that story. Um, amazing stuff. No matter who you're talking to, if you're talking to a, a group of businessmen, you're talking to investors, thank you. You're talking to, you're talking to, thank you. It doesn't matter. See, <clears throat> It doesn't, no matter what title people have, before they're an investor, before they're a prospective client, before they're a reader of your book, before they're a man and a woman. And when you give them the gift of a corner of you, and, and I, I, I can go full range, so I don't want to scare you with the depth of the story I chose. I've been doing this for a while. I've mastered the ability to take you in, take you deep, pull you back out. You want to layer this. So let your first stories be stories that aren't necessarily safe, because why play safe when you can play powerful? I may teach you how to do a lot of things, but I won't teach you how to play safe. I'm not interested in you playing safe. I'm interested in you in evoking emotion, pulling up the heart, opening up the space and letting people in. Because in this day of snail mail, Twitter mail, text mail, email, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, in this day of being connected to everyone, we tend to be connected to no one until you allow someone in through a story. I, I wanted to, um, to add a point here that I think is very important for the audience to, to remember. And you wanted to let me breathe. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> so I want to share a thought with you here in the audience. Often it's what happens to us in the darkness that help push us into the light. 
so we can let our light shine. Amir Ahmad Nasser, who's another person I've interviewed here uh, on Mind Valley, uh, he's the author of a series of books. He's an activist from Sudan, and he shared a really interesting insight with me, right? So he, um, he helps entrepreneurs find their voice. He helps businesses mm. figure out the story mm. on why mm. a business does what mm. it does. Mm. And Amir said that a lot of us go through dark moments. Mm -hmm. We go through um, abuse. We may go through depression. We may be, in your words, broke and broken. But he says sometimes those moments, even though they were painful, even though they, they at that time, we were not sure how we were going to overcome them, those moments are often gifts from heaven to wake us up to what we are meant to do in the world. Those moments cause us to ask ourselves a question. How can I make sure mm. my son or my daughter never has to go through that again? Right. And those moments point us towards our great work or our great business or our mission in life. I, call those, you, I call those gifts that came wrapped in sandpaper. <laughs> I put that in my book, the gifts that came and, wrapped in sandpaper. And if you, here in the audience, if you think about those moments, they may be painful, but there's something that we can learn from them. I know my moments. I, I wrote about it in my book when I was broke and broken and I was sleeping on a couch. Yes. When I had lost my startup and lost all my money and I was, and the only job I could get in Silicon Valley was dialing for dollars because the dot-com bubble had burst. And you had to rename yourself. You called yourself you, Vincent. Right, what, what because you, I yes. had to call myself Vincent Lakiani so that guys on the phone whom I was selling software to um, could pronounce my name. I was broke and broken, yes. and I discovered meditation as a way to come out of there. Yes. I've shared the story of how in 2003 I had to leave the United States because I ended up on a Muslim watch list. And I decided that when I started my company, Mind Valley, I wanted to make sure that unity, that, that, that my daughter, Eve, who is half European, half Indian, and therefore looks Syrian or Afghan, would never ever grow right. up to be right. on a Muslim watch list. Right. Those became my stories. Right. And, and the important thing is these stories don't just become a tool for you to, to deliver a speech that makes an audience fall in love with you. They become breadcrumbs that lead you to your mission. Absolutely. I realize from being the victim of so much racism, from being on a watch list, that part of my mission was to help bring together people of different cultures. It's why Mind Valley has 40 different nationalities. It's why uh, Mind Valley University or AFES has 50 different countries represented. Now, you just did the, the best segue ever to the next piece, the next piece of information that really talks about what, is it, what do you need to do to have an audience fall madly in love with you, while a huge part of that is story, huge part. But what you just said, what, 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 was, what you just said just made so clear is that stories and your entire message has to be fueled by your conviction. If you want to know what makes you a game-changing presenter, what makes you a game-changing speaker, whether you're speaking to one or a boardroom of five or in front of 50 or in front of 5,000, is have a conviction. Be willing to stand for something. Be willing to stand on a conviction. My grandmother says that, baby, your conviction and your convenience won't ever live on the same block. And most people won't hold on to a conviction because they don't want to be inconvenienced. They don't want to, the, the, the chance of someone have an opinion that differs from them. At, at the chance that the person in the third row might not like their conviction. See, when you're not willing to stand for something, Dr. Martin Luther King says this, if you won't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. What do you stand for? What's your conviction? How do you want to use your voice? You've been given the gift of voice. How will you use it? What are you going to change? And this is a bold question, but what are you going to impact, infect, or change because you were born? What are you going to influence because you're here? Every time you open your mouth, Though you may not be on, on, on your charge, you may just be hanging out, still inside every space, who you are, my grandmother says, who you be, 
And I know that's not grammatically correct, but when my grandmother says who you be, that means what you do when you're not talking, what you say when you're not speaking, what's the cause that pours from your skin, that when you sweat, your conviction comes out of your skin. What is that thing? What do you stand for? What I stand for is melting walls and building bridges. What I stand for is people owning their voice, even if it's just a whisper right now. Own your whisper until it gets stronger. And then stand for that thing that matters for you. And you don't have to stand for it like Nelson Mandela or Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Cesar Chavez. You don't have to stand for it like that, but stand for it the way you would stand for it. You don't have to do it the way Vision would do it or the way I'm doing it. There's no measure to it. There's no measure to the value you bring to the world. One of the most important people on the planet that you may not ever meet is my grandmother. Because in her quiet time, she pours into me. She doesn't have to do anything else. And so don't measure. Benjamin Franklin says that comparison is and will always be the thief of all joy. Don't measure your conviction to someone else's conviction. But if you want to be memorable, you want to be unforgettable, you want people to fall madly in love with you, make a stand. Because at the very most, at the very least, they'll admire you. They may not agree with your stand. I appreciate people. Even if I don't agree with them, I appreciate that they know their stand. They know their conviction. So when you want to make an impression as a speaker, as an orator, as a businesswoman, as a mother, as a father, as a friend, live inside your conviction and then gift your conviction to us. Allow us to see it. Mm, no, 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 no. More importantly, allow us to feel it. I don't want to just hear about your conviction. I want to feel it. I want it to be palatable. I want the tingles in my finger to occur because you just start speaking. I want the, thing, the, the tingles in my finger to occur because I saw the way you love the perceivingly unlovable, the way you were willing to forgive the perceivingly unforgivable. So number one, and being unforgettable, having people fall madly in love with you, is to be willing to share your story. And inside of that is so much. There's so much inside of that. I don't have time to share all of it with you here because there's so many techniques to sharing a powerful story. And I literally can break them all down to you. I don't have time to do it right now, but you have to know that in whole, the story, the transparency, the conviction, and the risk. Be willing to give your audience that and you've given them something that most people won't ever give them. And they'll give you back something, their heart, their loyalty. They will search for you. When I was on Oprah in 2007, literally, I was on Oprah with five masters. I mean, masters. Everyone had been in the secret. And the people on the stage that hadn't been in the secret, one directed the secret and the other was Oprah. <laughs> and, and I was the youngest person. Everyone was brilliant brilliant. I'm just sitting, like literally in the green room, I'm going, okay, we're going to get through this real good. Literally, I was the, you know, I was the peon. With all due respect, I was the peon. I was the newbie. Well, something happened and I didn't plan it, but I shared my story. Everyone else shared great intellect, great points, really great intellect, but I shared my story. Within 72 hours of being on Oprah, without my website even being listed, matter of fact, someone else owned LisaNichols.com. I didn't even own LisaNichols.com. You couldn't even find me if you did LisaNichols.com. But within 72 hours, without sharing my website, I received 9,782 emails because of my story. A friend of mine who was on the show, I won't say his name, he still says to this day, he still says to this day, I will never go on national media with you again. <laughs> I don't know. You might want to bring your story if you do. And so listen, you have no idea the doors that your story will open up. Now, I know, especially after watching this webinar, especially after watching this show, that you feel like stories are a big risk. They take you into a private place. Or you think you have to have a dark part in your life in order to tell a story. Well, Lisa, Vision, I didn't have that. I didn't sleep on a couch. I didn't have to wrap my, my child in, in a tile. So can I tell my story? Yes, yes. Tell a time in your life when you had doubt. It, it could be doubt about passing a test because when you share a time that you had doubt, everyone listening taps into their doubt. So you don't have to have had a dark past, though I think all of us have walked through that period. You just got to be willing to share a moment 
when things weren't so great and you needed to walk through that space. And don't walk us through so fast. Don't say, oh, life wasn't great, but then I got better. No, show me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. show me the eight pills in your hand or whatever your story is. Here's what I know. What I know is that an audience of one or an audience of 1,000, they're looking for connection. And when you're speaking to 500 people, you're not speaking to 500 people. When you're speaking to 40 people, you're not speaking to 40 people. When you're speaking to 10 people, you're not speaking to 10 people. You're speaking to one person and 10 chairs. You're speaking to one person and 500 chairs. And that person came to be inspired. I don't care what the topic is. They came to be inspired. And inspiration comes through content, but that's more so information. Inspiration comes through stories of forgiveness, perseverance, resiliency, love, being knocked down and getting back up, finding your way after losing your way. Inspiration comes when you had to climb over something, under something, around something, or break through something. That's when inspiration comes. We all love the hero's journey. Every single one of us loves the hero's journey. We see it on television. I mean, Rocky, what, 9, 10, 15? You all, he gets beat up, but you know he's gonna get up and we always do it. Get up, Rocky, get up, Rocky. Because Rocky represents us. Get up, Lisa, get up, Vision, get up, Diana, get up, John. It represents our children. It represents our mother and our fathers. We wanna know that our lives, no matter what occurs, will be all right. So no matter what your message is, no matter who you're speaking to, no matter how many people are in your audience or your boardroom or in your living room couch, the gift you give them that will make you freaking unforgettable and help them to fall madly in love with you is the gift of inspiration. And what I love about inspiration is that no matter how big your life is or your body is, you're never too big for inspiration. No matter how tall you get, you never outgrow inspiration. No matter how successful you become, you never no longer need inspiration. I said it like that. You always need inspiration. No matter how low you are and how dark it might be, you can always use a bit of light called inspiration. Inspiration is that jacket, that shirt, that pair of pants, those shoes that will always fit your audience. And when you give it to them through story, you give them several things. You give them inspiration and you give them connection and you give them trust. As a result back, they'll give you love, they'll give you loyalty, and they'll give you word of mouth. They'll tell someone about you. So inside of a story, you get it all. Now make sure when you share the story and you take me into your valley that you make sure you bring me out. Don't take me to your valley and then drop me there. Take me to your valley and bring me out, but don't take me through your valley too fast. Don't, no, slow down, stop, hit the speed bump, feel the speed bump, let me feel the speed bump, let me put my seatbelt on and then take me back out. Give me the gift of the journey and I'll give you the gift of my loyalty. Oh, that's beautiful, Lisa. Thank you, thank you so much. I know there are so many different levels yes. of storytelling. Yes. Um, you've shared with me a couple of techniques which I've applied on stage and have had a dramatic impact on my on 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 my resonance with an audience, including your technique of the valley. Um, but there's so much more, of yes. course, to making an audience fall in love there with is you. A, there are about fifteen to seventeen different techniques. Okay, so what what you just shared, story, that's one. Of 15 techniques. One of 15. And within each of these pillars of a, making an audience fall in love with you, there are different tools and techniques that you can apply. You can apply each technique independent of the other. They're like Legos. You can just use this one technique and see instant impact. You can use this one technique and see instant impact and up level. But when you put them all together, you layer them like a great lasagna, all of a sudden you're explosive. But you can learn one and, and apply it. You can learn another and apply it. And you can learn them and master them independent and then begin to use them interdependently. And that, that is when is then you get on stage and it becomes a freaking art form. So I want to share with you why learning these techniques are so important, right? Just two quick things. 
a lot of us forget just how powerful our impact can be when we get on stage. And a lot of us think, my God, getting on stage is so hard. But if you look at the world today, there are so many opportunities. There's almost this, this thing erupting in human consciousness where we want to gather as a tribe yes. and learn from someone. Yes. You see TEDx talks happening all around the world. Even in Kuala Lumpur, where we have Mind Valley HQ, we've had to open up our office because there are so many groups of designers, yes. programmers who want to come yes. and give talks, yes. even technical talks. And it is so easy to, to find an audience. The question and what becomes difficult is being able to connect with that audience in a profound way. But when you can, remarkable doors can open. A-Fest came to me because I was put on stage in Washington, DC, and I happened to accidentally, I didn't know what I was doing then, but now after studying with you, I know what I did. Yeah. I accidentally got an audience to connect with me. And at the end of my speech, I said, hey guys, if you enjoyed me for an hour, would you like to come hang out with me in Costa Rica for three days uh, and learn, I don't know, you tell me what you want to learn and I'll bring in the speakers. Next thing I know, AFES had, had gotten founded in a hotel in Washington, D.C. So whether you are a lawyer or a doctor or you are running for student body or you're a professional athlete and you have to give a media interview or you're simply going on Facebook Live, Right. If you can learn right. how to connect with people, you are adding rocket fuel to your career. You're adding this, these super boosters right. to that, that spaceship of you, which is about to take off. And that's why this, this program that we're creating with Lisa is really, really, really interesting. And so over the last two years, we've been brainstorming with Lisa. We've been putting these ideas together. Now, Lisa, you spoke about lasagna, right? Yeah. And that analogy. Here's what makes this really interesting. The program that we're putting together, to make it the world's number one public speaking course, we had to rethink how online learning works. You're not gonna sit down and try to digest all this information over eight hours. Rather, you're gonna join a quest, a really interesting interactive quest with almost 2,000 students globally from 50 countries starting together and being coached by Lisa. It's going to start on day one, and all the information, by the way, is below this video. You can see the information on the quest, the start date, the enrollment information, but everyone starts together on day one. And every day, for no more than 20 minutes, on your smartphone, or your tablet, or your computer, on your Mind Valley account, Lisa will come on and teach you one specific layer. Then you'll practice. You'll go into the community that day and record a little video of yourself, or watch someone else's video and critique them. And you know, it, 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 it takes a little bit of guts to do that, but, but ease your way into it. But every single day for 30 days, yes. what's going to happen is we're going to teach you one technique and one technique and one technique and one technique. And these pillars are going to line up and you're going to go deep. You're not just going to learn about the, the concept of storytelling. You're going to learn specific techniques to really be a masterful storyteller. And what you're going to find is this. No, we're not just preparing you to get on stage and rock it. We're preparing you to be a better CEO, to be a better doctor, to be a better lover, to be a better kindergarten teacher, to be a better nurse, to be a better uh, engineer. Because no matter what you're doing in the world today, you are going to have to communicate with people. You're going to have to make your ideas heard. And what you are gaining over here is a massive boost to your entire presence as a human being because once you learn these skills, everything changes. So what you have is one of the world's greatest teachers. And here are a couple of other additional really cool stories from students. In our last batch of Speak and Inspire, we had some 2,500 students take the journey together and it was amazing to hear what this did for people. And what was surprising is a lot of people said this wasn't about public speaking. They learned to speak, yes but it transformed them because they found their voice. The number one comment we got from people is, I finally found what I was about. I finally found my voice. Now, these are some really inspiring stories and pictures I wanted to share with you. So this remarkable woman, Dixie Ann said, what I didn't realize was the influence Speak and Inspire would have on my personal life far more than on my professional life. For example, she said, the carefrontation technique, which you learn in Speak and Inspire, completely changed her family's path. Her kids are two and four, and her parenting techniques are now strongly geared towards holding a safe space for them using regular carefrontations.
Now this guy, William, now he did use it for his professional life and he said his sales went up 50%, also brought in the biggest sales amount till date that no one has ever achieved. And one day he was hosting a training program for his company and in a brief 10 minutes of them seeing someone said, William, you are a powerful speaker. And in fact, he was so good, the next round of training, he was asked to be the main speaker. I want you to keep in mind that one of the greatest things about Speak and Inspire is the supporting tribe. For example, Becky said, the tribe is a powerful component, helped us create a safe space where we could be open and share ourselves. Now, Judith used this on a PowerPoint. Now, this was a PowerPoint artist talk and it got 2,000 views, which she said in her world is astonishing. So you see, it's not just about public speaking. As if here says, it's about expressing yourself in every situation and in her words, slowly I am becoming unstoppable. Now this woman, Teresa, she was so good in the tribe. She was posting and sharing her videos even while having a chest infection. And she said she was then asked to give a public presentation at work and the clinical lead was so seriously impressed at the way she could control the room. But I want you to know that it's not all gonna be easy. Joanne here said, what I really loved about Speak and Inspire was the daily homework, which we had to share on the Facebook page. Now, it's not daily homework. You don't have to share every single day, but expect that you'll be sharing a few videos of yourself speaking directly into your iPhone and getting feedback on that. And um, you don't have to, but I know that if you do, and if you do this homework, you're going to improve so much more because the tribe is so supportive. Exciting when I look at all the people like I've run into hundreds of thousands of people in Croatia, Slovenia and South Africa and and the Caribbeans and the British Virgin Islands. And you're right, just like the Mind Valley team, they say, I want to harness my speaking ability. And these people are doctors, um, they're counselors, uh, they're parents. They're, they're not people who want to be staged. You don't have to want to be a platform speaker like this is platform speaking. But speaking is required by Every, and, and everything you do. And what I love about this course is that I teach you things like how to master the art of enrollment. If you're a parent, you just want to master the art of enrollment, right? If you have a husband or a wife, you want to master the art of enrollment. How to own your voice. See, so many times we haven't really owned our voice yet. And then understand how to speak to inspire, not to impress. How to take people into a valley and bring them back out into a light. Like I love when we created this course, when I created this course and the content in it, I thought what could take someone the furthest no matter what no matter what business they were in, no matter where they lived in the world, no matter their culture, no matter their religion, what can help take them the furthest? And what I really appreciate about this course is a lot of it I taught from what I needed, what I needed, what I needed as a woman, what I needed as a, as a daughter. How, how did I need to have conversations with my parents that were uncomfortable, but I didn't know how to have them, which is why I'm really adamant about the, the part in the course that talks about how to have care frontation instead of confrontation. Like that to me is relationship saving. Like if you're, you're in a relationship with someone that you love and you want to stay in that relationship, then you better learn care frontation real fast and replace confrontation with care frontation. No one teaches that. And you discussed this in the program. And I go in depth. Right. One of the classes is just focused on how do you replace confrontation with care frontation. That's worth the price of admission right. by itself. And then how, how to have conversations, not performances, so that you come across authentic every single time because even though you might feel like you're even though you might feel you're being authentic if the people that are listening to you don't then your truth doesn't matter cuz their perception of you is really their truth how do you how do you show up as authentic every single time like i talked about the things that i struggled with so i first built on the things that i needed help with cuz i figure if i needed that help then you might have need you might can use that support. And so I first coach the modules and not the, the, the longest module is 19 minutes and like 42 seconds. Like that's the longest course. So it's, it's tight. It's, it's, it's like a shot of B12. It's a shot of energy. It's a shot of content. And then each day I have you just take off one layer of, of uh, every day I have, I have you put in one more layer of action, small action. Well, some days it's kind of big. 
But at the end of 30 days, what I love is that if you choose, and it has to be your choice, if you choose to be active every single day, and if you choose every day, and there's some rest days, there's some days where you have nothing to do but reflect, reflect and just kind of marinate on the stuff that we did the day before. But on the days that I give you something to do, if you choose to take action and do the self-work every day for 30 days, there's no way, I say this, there is no way in 30 days that you can be the same person you were at the beginning of the journey. There's no way. This is a complete makeover for yourself. There's no way. Days. There's no way. In 30 days. Because every day, so a couple of important things about, about Quest. Now, some of you are, are new to Quest. You're used to traditional old school online learning um, or universities where you sit for a one hour ever lecture and ever or you and buy ever an eight and hour ever. course and then you know you never complete it. What makes Quest different is yeah. this. As Lisa said, micro learning. We found that if you cut up the content into 20 minutes a day and you work it on layers so that every day you just ingest 20 minutes and you can play it on your, on your smartphone, you can listen to the audio while you're driving, we all have 20 minutes a day. We find that, that most people are able to get through the entire thing 30 days straight. Yes. 30 days straight, right? And if you miss a day, just you know catch up the next day. 20 minutes is easily doable. But the second thing is, it starts on a particular day. The reason we have it start on a particular day is because there is extreme power in 2,000 people Doing starting together. together, being part of an online community together, yes. and supporting each yes. other. And you will be so inspired as you see people transform in this community. You can take a video of yourself, put it up there, and have people critique you on a particular technique, or praise you, or tell you how to refine it. Everyone in a quest becomes not just a student, but, but a, teacher. a teacher and a mentor and a coach to each other. We are all doing this together. So number one, micro learning. Number two, community. Number three, we all start together. We will go through this together and we will cross that finishing line together. Together. And can I tell you why yeah. that's so valuable? Because I love my life today. But if there are some things that I could tweak and I, 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 don't, I don't take back anything that I've experienced but I wish I would have done it with the tribe. I wish I would have had community. I wish I would have had people walking the journey with me at that same pace with me, watching me grow while I watch them grow, cheering each other on. That, what one of the things I love about Quest the most is that tribe impact. Right. And, and teaching and teaching the content, the self-work that I give you, the self-work or the homework that I give you, some of it's just about supporting each other. So you'll see these bursts of moments when everyone's loving on you because that was their homework and you're loving on them. And when you get a circular energy where everyone's giving love, it becomes like this spontaneous combustion of possibility. What better space to live in? And I'm so grateful to it because I didn't have that. I didn't have that. So I love the concept. I love how we, we've taken our time to put together a, an experience. Right. And, and, and I think you, you, you give and you teach and you serve not only from what you want, but also from what you needed. And I needed this. I needed a tribe like this. So I'm grateful. And, and a great thing about this, this program is also we layer behavioral change psychology in it. Now, what this means is that in 30 days, you transform. When you take an online course, there's, yes. no, there's no clear, um, there's no guarantee that you're going to transform. We zone in, we zone out, we rarely finish it, but this one is layered over 30 days because every day, if you listen to this 20 minute audio and you do the thought process, you start adding new dimensions to yourself. At the end of 30 days, you are a radically new person. And the next time you go to your boss to ask for that race, the next time you're in a business meeting and you're trying to present your idea, the next time you see someone attractive in a bar and you want to just approach him or her, you're communicating in a radically different way. You see, you think this is about public speaking. It isn't. It, this is so much more. This is about magnifying your interface with the rest of humanity. It's the ultimate connector. See, the distance between you and Everything you want and need is communication. That's the distance between you and everything. All things start with how you communicate. All things end with how you communicate it.
And so this is that game changer tool that puts something in your back pocket that you didn't have before. And you can pull it out for a prospective consumer. You can pull it out for a friend. You can pull it out for your children. You can pull it out for him or her. You pull it out whenever you need it because now you have it. And the biggest reason Mind Valley is investing so much in this program is because, as you know, our Mind Valley community is not just about personal growth. It's about personal growth with a mission. It's about personal growth and then using these finely tuned brain and these happy bodies to go out there in the world and make a difference and push humanity forward. And the ability to speak and persuade and rally a crowd around your vision right, right, is right. crucial for that. Right. We've seen situations in the world in the past one year yes. where people with dangerous visions yes. have rallied crowds. Yes. Where people with crazy ideas have caused us to deny things like climate change. Yes. What if good people, people like you, people in our Mind Valley community, could learn these tools, could gain this power to go out there and change government, to go out there and move and inspire the big corporations they work for to take on more sustainable practices. The educational system. Could go system. out there yes. and speak for the truth. Could go out there and change the educational system. Yes. This unleashes your superpowers for good. And this is why this program is so important to me. I love it. Unleashes your superpowers for good. What I love about this program is that what's one person's gift can be another person's skill set. You know, Michael Jordan, basketball player, he got cut from the basketball team. Mm -hmm. And he was given the role of the manager of the basketball team. All he could do was gather basketballs. And then he began to learn the skill set. And he became Michael Jordan. I believe we all have our Michael Jordan in us. I believe we all have that superpower, that super thing we've been designed to do. I believe that the distance between us and it sometimes, the distance between us and the people who can help get us there is our communications or our presence. So <clears throat> I'm honored. I'm honored to bring forth something that I know is going to transform someone's life. It might be yours. It might be your friends. It might be your child's. I know that when you own your, when you're able to harness your power, stand in your conviction and deliver a message that can make you unforgettable and help people to fall and help people to fall madly in love with you. All of a sudden, we don't walk this journey by ourselves as much. I know the number one thing that people feel, even in a group of others, is alone. I've heard it a hundred, a thousand times, is that even around people, I feel alone. Well, I know the connector, the number one connector, is communication. It's voice. And so let, allow me to give you the gift of connection. It'll come in a package, in a program, 30 days. It'll have a process. It'll be somewhere between five and 20 minutes a day. It'll have a structure. It'll require you to invest. But at the end of the day, it's the gift of ultimate connection. And then you write us back and tell us what happened when you played full out. Write us back and tell us how life looks different six months down the line, a year down the line, how all of a sudden you've harnessed this ability to create this divine connection, divinely inspired connection with people all over the world are right in your house. Allow me to do that for you. Allow us to do that for you. Thank you, Lisa. So let's get you off the sidelines and into the call. And just a final, so um, you can, all the information is below this video. Scroll down, read about the program. You can enroll, you'll see a start date. You should enroll before the start date because as I said, the power happens when we all start mm -hmm. together. And as a special thank you for investing this last hour, tuning into me and Lisa, there's a special unlock discount, a further discount that is available on this page. You already get a discount for enrolling before the, um, the, the closing date, but we'll give you a further discount for enrolling on this page. So do not close this page because you will not be able to get back to that particular discount code unless you replay this entire webinar. And one more thing, because it's so important here at Mind Valley to ensure that you have the best possible experience as a student and that you know you're safe. You can enroll in this program, experience the entire program for 10 days. And if you feel it isn't for you, with one email to us, support at mindvalley.com. Our award-winning customer support team is happy to give you a full refund. 
Try it out for 10 days. You have nothing to lose. You don't even have to make up your mind right now. Just try it out for 10 days. And if this program, in any way, you feel this isn't the one of the greatest investments you've ever made in yourself, one email, get a full refund. I'm confident because I know the quality and the work that we put into this and how amazing a teacher Lisa is that many of you are going to be so transformed in 10 days that you'll want to stay on for the full 30. But even if you can't or can't afford to, that's cool. Get a full refund. But try it out. You have nothing to lose but your entire future to gain. Thank you. Anything to add, Lisa? No, I think that, you know, one of the things I realize is that when you get ready to do something like this, start with what you expect to get out of it. Start with what you want so that you know when you got it. So be bold enough for yourself. Make a list of here's a major win from me, and I guarantee you we'll deliver. Awesome. I'll see you guys there. See you in Quest. Doing Lisa's course was, at that moment, feeling isolated in a little village in France. It was just a way for me to express myself in English, be listened to and loved for who I was. And she really taught us that. That was like the setup. Before I was very shy, I didn't like to speak with people, communication, interpersonal communication, but now it's the most amazing, beautiful thing when you are able to connect deeply with another person. I learned how to tell story. Yeah, more naturally, like talking to friends. So I think even in front of camera, I feel comfortable right now. Yeah. But the main thing is to not be afraid to be yourself when you're speaking. And that I think that has helped me connect so much better with my audience and really become a better speaker to one person or two groups. What Speak and Inspire did for me is it allows me to use my voice every day, no matter what I'm doing. And it allows me to use the language in a way that I can really connect with other people. I want to be able to bring my voice out there and that was why I decided let's go with Speak and Inspire. What is the, the biggest result that I'm taking with me at the end is the love and the support that I found in this tribe. Uh, I've met wonderful people that I consider among my best friends. If you're ready to move, into a more powerful place in your life and if you want a process that can help you in manageable steps you're not going to be overwhelmed um, but if you really want something powerful and inspiring and then to be able to use that in your own life speaking inspires of course for you